It's one of the most daunting prospects of getting into a competitive Pokemon tier is always the team building side of it. It's easy enough to watch a whole bunch of videos on YouTube and get an idea for what's in a tier, but when you actually go in and try to build for yourself, it could be really scary. You look at the team builder, you open it up, and you just see so many different Pokemon. I mean, even just in you alone, we've got upwards of what, like 40-ish Pokemon that are all viable in the tier. And while it's easy enough to just throw a whole bunch of the good Pokemon on the team, it could still be hard to figure out how exactly they synergize together, how you should put them together on a team to make sure you get the most out of them, what sets to run, EVs, etc. And that's why we have sample teams. I think this has always been the easiest way to get into a new tier, is just load up a sample team, or load up a team from someone's YouTube video even, that you like, and just use that. Because oftentimes these teams are going to just be pretty solid, and it's a lot easier to get into a tier when you're using something that's consistent. And so I wanted to go over all of the new and new sample teams with y'all today, because we just put them up, we got, like, ten of them. <laughs> You'll notice some themes as well that I want to cover pretty quickly. Because I think they do a pretty good job of showing what's meta right now. And, of course, the biggest thing is Sandaconda prevalence. If you look at the teams here, I can even just make it so we only see Sandaconda... Okay, not only Sandaconda teams, but you get the idea. Out of all of our teams, we've got six out of ten have Sandaconda in it. And that should come as a surprise to no one. Sandaconda has Glare, which is incredibly hard to actually dissuade in this tier because well what's the cleric we've got like two pokemon that you want to switch into a glare really that are consistently seen and that's electros and rotom so you'll see also a decent amount of electros plus rotom throughout these teams we've got like four of the teams have one or the other with honestly if you were to see a whole bunch more teams you'd probably even see more eel this mod has been popping up everywhere because every team really needs a way to deal with Sandaconda. And Sandaconda is one of our most consistent stealth rockers. So you see a lot of that too. And you also see a lot of Passimian. Passimian is just the best choice scarf user in tier by a mile. The tier is centralized around it. I do personally think this is an example of healthy centralizing. Where you've got a Pokemon that's so good and has so little reason to not be used. But it's maybe not broken in the traditional sense. Of like, oh, well, it just beats every team because you just, you know, one or two hit KO everything and there's not enough ways to beat it. The Simeon has that nice combination of strength. It's pretty decently bulky for, you know, a revenge killer. It outspeeds just about everything you need to with its scarf. It can pivot so you have great support for the, you know, myriad of wall breakers in Inu. And you've got Broken Knockoff. And in this generation, you know, decent amount of things lost Knockoff. Inu surprisingly still has a nice amount of Knockoff users, but Passimian's still, of course, bringing it to the table where some of the fighting types in the tier, you know, either lost it or never had it to begin with. And even one more thing I want to mention even is the really consistent use of Drift Blim. I mean, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six Drift Blims as well. I feel like this is a Pokemon that not a lot of people expected to really take over in you this hard. Because when we got it last generation from Aryu, it never really found a spot. And that's because, in part, we had Pokemon home pretty early. So we got our Defoggers. And when Drifblim dropped, you know, it was into a tier with a lot of hostile Pokemon. Too. There was like Sneasel, there was Haunter, there was Skuntank. A lot of Pokemon that could very easily deal with it. And so this gen is pretty cool to see, even though, you know, maybe its stat distribution isn't the most inspiring, it ends up being a still a really bulky option, it's got access to multiple statusing moves, Thunder Wave and Will-O-Wisp, Strength Sap's always been great, and it makes real good use of Terra too, just like a lot of other Pokemon that this here do. Because you take that knockoff, okay, well, Terra into a Poison type, what you gonna do now? Or Terra into a Fairy type even, or a Ground type, etc, etc. I wanna cover some of these teams now real quick. I probably, I, I did say I'd go over all of them. I'm not going to go over all of them. <laughs> I want to go over first this Pyro Spikes team from Taki. Y'all should remember this from the like hour-long video that we did with it. But as you can see here, this is a very standard example of balance, and it incorporates one of the most common balance scores in my experience with Kaparaja, Quillfish, Umbreon. This generally covers just about everything you need in the tier. You've got maybe not a resistance to everything, but... 
a generally good blanket switch in. So you look at like fighting types, those are checked by Quillfish. Some of the just strong special attackers of the format. You know, one of Umbreon or Copper Rogers should be able to tank that on. You know, you look at some of the dangerous setup sweepers. Frostmoth? What's a Frostmoth to a Copper Raja? I even could Terra to potentially mess with you if I need to. You're looking at Oricorio? Hey man, Oricorio is a little scary. <laughs> but of course, Oricorio, if it. We're, let's look at the Fire Oricorio. If it Terras, can't be Copper Raja anymore. Because it's probably going to be Terra Grass. And even Umbreon could potentially stave it off if it needs to with like Terra type Ghost Curse. And just dissuade it from trying to stay in for a whole bunch of turns. You look at your fighting checks, like I mentioned, Quillfish always can keep those out of the way, as can Drift Blim. And then just your nice speed source, well, hey, Metacham and Pyroar, both really fast, Metacham's got that choice scarf. And we've seen Terra fighting Simeon put in work. Terra fighting Metacham's even stronger. So you, th you think Sayatakon is avoiding that 2 hit KO? No, no, no. So it's a very cool team that I like how it plays out. Pyroar is really appreciative of spikes, because you think about the common Pyroar switchings, so you're looking at Vaporeon as the most prevalent one, because it's our only, like, specially bulky water type in the tier. And that, of course, can get sent packing by a Terra Grass, Terra Blast. You've got some other just generic special walls like Chansey, which Chansey is just kind of passive anyway, so you've got a lot of leverage when that comes in. You've got um, Umbreon, just like we have on this team. Umbreon with Spikes Up is not going to be switching into you as consistently. And if you ever get a Will-O-Wisp on it too, you just cancel out its leftovers, which is really, really helpful. And I mean, hey, if it's like a Boots Umbreon, at least you start getting that passive damage. And you don't have to worry about them being synchronized, potentially, as their ability. Because Pyro is a fire type, it can't be burned. So I think this is a bit of a very fun team. Definitely recommend using this if you want to start getting games on the ladder. As we saw in the live we did, it was really consistent. Another team I want to recommend too is this fun Hyper Offense. I think Hyper Offense is always a really good way to get into a tier because it's easy to get a lot of games with and a lot of games quick with. Because Hyper Offense's whole point, okay, I'm going to try to overload your team as quickly as I can and I'm just going to beat you before you can beat me. And Tonki with this team chose a very cool route with Double Memento. So Bombardier, we got that Pokemon about two weeks ago. It's got Stealth Rock. It's got Taunt, and it's got Memento, so <laughs> it's already got the tool set needed to be a pretty effective Hyper Offense lead. And then you've got Muck as well as another Memento user with even Mean Look. <laughs> so you could potentially trap something and just get the Memento off. Things you trap, honestly, there's not a ton. The main issue for this Muck set I found was that Santa Conda would often just come in. But if you were to do one of the other ground types, you could easily lock that in, and they're not going to Oko you. So, it's not really a big deal. Potentially something else you could lock in with you would be like a Quillfish. You just gotta hope that they're not Taunt. So if they're Taunt, well, kind of dire. But you potentially get off a Memento versus any of these Pokemon. I mean, you're looking at something like Zangoose, which is pretty frail. It likes the extra safety. Veluza, this is a... this is, I was gonna say this is a bulkier set. It's not... this doesn't really constitute bulk. But Veluza in general is one of those sneaky bulky Pokemon. So, give it even more security, it definitely can make use of the Memento Spam. Of course, Far Giraffe does that really effectively as well, so it's another really good option. Overall, I just found this team to be really consistent. And you've even got really good offensive synergy between all of the setup sweepers. That's always been a huge point of using HO. You want to make sure that all of your setup sweepers work together, because the point of a Hyper Offense team really is to go from one setup sweeper to another, to another, to another, to another, and somewhere along that chain, you should have won the game. If you didn't, well, you know, did you go next? But the whole idea of hyper offense setup spam like this is the wall break, not the wall breakers, the setup sweepers should, you know, break for one another. So think about it like this, right? You've got Terrifier Fire Giraffe here, so you could potentially lure in a steel type. That could open up the game for Frostmoth, and then it doesn't matter that you don't have your Terra anymore. And I mean, it even works vice versa. Maybe Frostmoth weakens a Copper Raja enough for your Fara Giraffe to sweep. Or maybe, like, Fara Giraffe is able to draw in a Vaporeon and beat it down for Veluza a little bit, for example. It's this kind of mindset that you gotta come at when you're using Hyper Offense. You wanna make sure you can chain from one to the next. 
And now we're gonna just pick any one of these, like, balance teams. Just normal looking ones from a bottle. And I'm going to pick... Oh, I don't know. CB Bruxish. Hey, look who built that team. It doesn't say here. But it says here. So, here's a CB Bruxish team. I forget if I've used it in a live or not, but we'll go over it real quick here. So, this is one of the most normal ways I can suggest you to build a balance team. Like, the most straightforward as possible. You find a wall breaker you want to use. And here, I chose Bruxish. I thought, you know, hey, Bruxish is really strong. Choice Band is really good. Let's use a Bruxish. And I immediately think of a setup super to use. And, well, Oricorio Bale came to mind. This was before the Sensu ban, so I just wanted to try out the Fire Oricorio and see how I felt about it. And for music this team, I thought it was incredible. The nice thing with Bruxish and it is the real, really the only defensive stop to Oricorio Bale in terms of typing is going to be Vaporeon, because the other water types are not bulky enough, or they're just not really well equipped to deal with Oricorio Bale, because you look at something like Quillfish, I mean, that's running Surf most often anyway, so unless it's able to get the Toxic off on you, it's not going to hold up, and they're always physically defensive, so, you know, physically defensive Pokemon trying to check the special attacker, not too good. And so you're looking at Vaporeon mostly, which could potentially even use its Terra to get the edge on, you know, Oricorio if it feels the need. You potentially could Terra Dark as the Oricorio Terra Grass. And then, hey, you don't take Super Effective from Revelation anymore. I cut out a lot of words there, <laughs> I'm so sorry. But the idea with Bruxish here was, look, I might not always beat the Vaporeon one-on-one -on -one because of Terra Dark. You know, I could Siphangs it on the Switch, and it could Terra versus me. And now, oh, it's immune to Wave Crash, it's immune to Psychic Fangs, my two best moves. But I still have Poison Fang. So you could potentially get the badly poisoned off on Vaporeon, get that Toxic Poison going. And now, Oricorio Bale, it could just keep trying to Quiver and Sweep. It doesn't matter if Vaporeon goes for Haze a ton, because it's never going to be able to successfully Haze stall you anymore. So I thought that combo was really cool. And then I liked the idea of both Sandaconda and Chansey. At a point, I even just wanted to try this as a defensive core. But double paralysis is really interesting, I felt. Because Bruxish is not the fastest. And so to be able to potentially slow down some of the quicker revenge killers, I enjoyed. I also just noticed this should not be Terra Normal. Um, <laughs> this should be Terra Fairy. Uh... I'll fix that. But then, at the end of the day, we needed a couple more just general mons for the team to just round out certain roles. I like Passimian because it's the best choice Scarfer in the tier, as we mentioned earlier. And then I like Rotom, partly because I wanted to use Rotom, but also because it gives the team another little, like, shoddy resistance to fighting. It's not a great check, but it's an okay one. I wanted a Glare Dissuader as well. And while I could always go my own Sandaconda, I think it's nice to have that extra option versus it, and to not have to consistently rely on just taking these obnoxiously long Sandaconda versus Sandaconda matchups. And then I want to go over one more team. And let's go with... Hmm, let's go with a double dark team. Oh, wait. Where's the import? Wait, where's the import on either of these? Okay, I gotta fix that. <laughs> Let's go with this last team, then. Thank goodness I'm catching these issues now. So this is a cool team. So, Hazard Stack has always been a type of build that you've been able to use in teams. Where your whole goal is just throw up as many hazards as you can and keep them on the field for as long as you can. Oftentimes you'll see this on Hyper Offense, where you'll maybe have, if we think back to black and white OU at certain points, when the Deoxyses were allowed, Deoxys defense and speed in specific, these teams would say, okay, I lead with my Deoxys, I set up rocks and as many layers of spikes as I can, and then I'm going to unleash a litany of wall breakers on you. This team does it differently, because this is a balance build. And so you've got your Stealth Rocks Anaconda, You've got your spikes on Vespicon, and you've got your T-spikes on your Haunter, which I think is a new move. I don't remember this getting T-spikes before. 
And then you've got, of course, Haunter as well as a Ghost type, so you could potentially Spin Block. Vespa Queen can Terra into a Ghost type to Spin Block. And you've got Defiant on Passimian, so you make people not want to use their, um, what's it called? Their Defogs. And the whole point here, Zoroark, you know, Physical Zoroark's honestly not the best in terms of a wall-breaking Pokemon. You know, you're looking at a lot of mods that would switch in. There are even mods that are commonly taking a knockoff anyway, so something like, say, a Sanconda, you're probably not going to get that boosted knockoff versus something like a Passimian. Well, you just don't beat Passimian with this sort of set, because it's resistant to all your attacks. So having all of these hazards is so useful, because it puts these Pokemon a lot lower and makes it so they do have to question, hey, do I tank the hit anymore? So I think it's a really cool idea. And I think the Pokemon all come together really well in this sort of build to, you know, deny the opponent what they'd like to do. It's a very fun looking build. I might have to try it for myself. Phew! But I think it's going to be it for me for this one. The whole point when you're getting into a team is don't feel, don't feel like you need to build for yourself at the start. Always use your resources that are available to you. And I think sample teams are always the best resource for any new player coming into a tier because they give you a bit more of a safety blanket a little bit more room for error because you could trust okay this team is pretty solid so as i learn with it it's more likely that i'm going to keep getting wins compared to if i you know learn with a team that's not as consistent it might still be hard to start finding those wins if i'm using something that's not you know super sturdy super well tested yet and then once you've used sample teams enough, you think your grasp of the meta is really good, then it becomes a lot easier to team build for yourself, and that's what the fun really begins. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I've got to fix some of these sample team links apparently now. <laughs> of course, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you aren't already subscribed, and if you'd like, hey, join as a member, where you do get access to exclusive content. Right now, it's just Ranbats. Eventually, it'll probably be other content. Until next time, though. Stay safe, guys, and I'll catch you then. Peace.